to another vlog. So it is Saturday. The last vlog ended on Tuesday. The last clip that I recorded was on a Tuesday. It's now Saturday and all those days in between I've been sick or most of them at least. So what I said in the last vlog at the end of the last vlog was that I was going to start Wondersmith and then you guys were going to vote on what I would read after that. I fully expected Wondersmith to take the entirety of this week's reading because while it is middle grade and it is a very streamlined plot and it's very fast and it's very easy to read, it's also 520 pages and that would just take me at least a week to read, probably maybe even two. But I've been useless so what I've been able to do is read a lot. So I'm done with this now uh, and I'm going to talk to you about it. It actually works out perfectly to start the vlog just giving a quick chat about this because the basic plot line of book two is a spoiler for book one. So it works out that this isn't the centerpiece of a video. So I'm not going to give you any kind of spoilers. I'm not even going to talk about the plot for this book at all just because uh, the plot of this book is a spoiler for book one, like I said. So I'm mostly just going to talk about how I felt about this book, my emotions, and some very general things. So in book one, one thing that we know about more again from the very start is that she was born on a particular day and because of that she is cursed and so anytime anything bad happens catastrophic terrible unlucky things tend to happen around her a lot and anytime it happens it's blamed on her because she is bad luck she as a person causes bad luck causes unlucky things to happen so she's generally not well liked in by her family or by her um town and she's whisked away to this magical world and it's amazing and I love it and you should definitely read book one. Uh, book two, again, no, I'm not going to tell you anything about it except that the the inform the stuff about her being bad luck is expanded on. It's more complicated as you would expect than it seems on the surface and in book two we still have that similar thread of because of circumstances surrounding her, because of certain things about her, people oftentimes when they first meet her or first learn this about her, just generally don't like her. So this book has taken me through a lot of emotions and most of them have been anger. Not anger at the book, the book has been wonderful, but anger at the people. There have been times where I've just wanted to jump into the book and hurt someone, which is maybe not polite, but you know what? They're not either. Uh, this was a very emotional story. This had a lot of uh, really intense moments. I'm, I'm consistently impressed with Jessica Townsend for uh, exploring a lot of really tough topics and a lot of really like difficult emotions um, in a very accessible but like she doesn't shy away from putting her readers through things. Um, in book two the stakes are really raised. Our characters are in genuinely terrifying and dangerous situations which I really really liked. It was a great level up from book one which was um, also, you know, there's still a lot going on in book one but it was more whimsical and this got a lot more intense in my opinion. Um, there were there were very unnerving scenes. If I were, you know, 11, 12, 13 reading this book, I would be little bit freaked out at times <laughs> and I really like that she brings all that emotion along with that one thing that both of these books have done well is that it just draws me right into the story I'm walking the streets with Morrigan I'm uh, I'm living life with her I'm in this world with her I just feel like I'm there and uh, book two we get even more of that because of reasons so <laughs> so it's like it's it, I feel like I've entered the story and with it being so immersive couple that with the really intense feelings that I felt reading this book it was a really it was a, it was actually it was the perfect books book to just blitz through uh, while being sick also Jupiter is the shining light of this entire story and even if I hated these books I would keep reading them just for him but I don't hate these books so win all around. I did like book one more. I've seen a lot of people say that every book gets better um, so you know don't take my word for it but for me I did like book one more than book two but not by any large measure. I've really enjoyed both of them. 
I also read the next arc in Hunter Hunter, which I I didn't look up the pronunciation for so I won't even attempt it here but there it is on the screen and I read that it's only three chapters long so I'm going to talk to you about it with spoilers skip to timestamp on the screen if you don't want it. So I know that I was saying Kalua's name wrong in the review and somebody sent me a clip of how to say it correctly and I haven't watched that clip and I didn't bring my phone down here so forgive me I'm going to say his name wrong in this vlog clip but I will learn it by the next one. Kalua, we're now going to uh, his family estate to try to get him to us. First of all, I love um, the character, it like this. I love the character designs for his family. They are so eerie and creepy and um, I just, I just, it like sends a chill down me just to see, which I already know how bad these people are. I already have opinions on them, on how they've treated my boy. So I, I already don't like them, but then I see them and their character design, designs match how I feel about them so well. I've got my eyes on his sister. I think that she is, I think there's stuff to her too. But like, this is not a lighthearted, breezy story. This is not fun. Let's let's go on an adventure and and defeat the bad guys. This is dark stuff that we have to see in his life. That and and and, and the fact that he's hanging there and he's accepting his torture and he's handling it so casually when his brother comes in and he wakes him up and he's like, oh, hey, you're a little bit early. Like, he's just accepting it. But then whenever, the moment he realizes that his friends are there, he rips his chains off and, and sets himself free. He could have done it the entire time, but he chose not to because, like, because why? Because he's accepted that this is his lot in life? Because he's accepted that this is a, this is what his family is going to do to him and there's nothing he can do about it, so he's just gonna survive it until until he's until they've decided that he's punished enough. But he can get out of it. And then the different guards that we face multiple guards. We face that little kid that can take down an army on his own, and we face the guards that um, are in the guard quarters and they're doing the coin trick thing. And we, we see multiple, not guards, I'm saying guards, it's butlers. We see multiple butlers that are in charge of taking care of this estate and in charge of making sure that people don't come on that aren't invited. And each one that we face off against, they initially resist, but then surrender because they want Kalua. I'm sorry I'm saying his name wrong, they want him to be safe and happy and they know that those things are not here and they want him to be able to leave but first they want to test Gon and make sure that he's going to take care of him and I just and then every time we move past a butler their response is just just take care of him, please. And you can see their tenderness and their love for him, but that you also see that there's nothing they can do. There's even a little um, like pre-chapter flashback, I don't know where it is now, uh, uh, showing that Kalua, whenever he was even smaller, even younger, when he was like six, I think, he uh, asked the other guard, I'm just gonna find it, hang on. Here it is. He asked him to be his friend even back then because oh, because that's all he's ever wanted. He just wants a friend. He just wants a companion. But his family refuses to allow that simple human right to him because he must be a killing machine and they don't want him to have any kind of, of relationship or anything that would make him empathetic in his life. I assume that's the reasoning. We also know that they let him leave, but they don't plan on letting him stay gone. And honestly, I just... Kalua has become my main character. Like, I love Gon, I love him, I will follow him throughout this series, but Kalua has become my main character. I'm so impressed with Tagashi's ability to create such nuanced characters that I care this much about this early on. I mean, there's so much. I could do an entire character analysis video on Kalua if I could learn how to say his name. I could do an entire character analysis video on him right now and I barely know him right now. <sighs> this has been too long. Let's move on. One thing that 
uh, we get to do now since I um, plowed through that is we get to see what, what won the poll. So there was no poll. There was just a comment section. I'm going to go look through the comments really quick and see which book um, won and what I'm going to be reading next. I counted it up and I'm actually super surprised that Wild Seed won. For some reason I thought Red Country would win, maybe because I see more people talking about Abercrombie than I do Butler on YouTube, on BookTube, but I'm thrilled. This was actually the one that I was leaning more towards. I was feeling more like I wanted sci-fi and I've only read one Butler book and I loved it so much. So I'm really excited about this. Plus it's only 306 pages long, which means I might be able to finish it before the end of the vlog. So, I can't read it right now because I have some errands to run because I'm really behind on everything after being sick for a few days and then we're having dinner with my parents. So I'll start this tomorrow, but yay, I'm actually, I'm really, I'm really excited that you guys chose this. Okay, so I'm now on book two of Wild Seed. This is, I'm now halfway through the book and whoo, um, I did want something dark. Okay, so we have two perspective. We have Anyawu and Doro. Anyawu is this incredible woman who uh, is ageless, time doesn't touch her. She has, she still has the same body that she had at 20 and it age can't touch her um, but she can shape shift she can take on whatever form she wants whether that be another human or an animal or you know whatever she wants uh, she can take on the shape of any living being she's also incredibly strong she's also incredibly knowledgeable she's uh, basically immortal and then there's Doro who is a piece of scum, really. He's also basically immortal, but his abilities are different from hers. He can take on the body of anyone he wants, but not by shape-shifting into them. He actually, he, he kills them and steals their body and inhibits their body with his soul. He could sense Anyawu's power and her presence and he traveled across country or across world now I don't actually remember to get to her to collect her and he he's a twisted individual he's doing some pretty messed up stuff in his life his ambitions are twisted uh, what's the word that she uses an abomination it's an abomination the kind of things that he does and I won't tell you any of them because it's not really revealed until later he's a controlling man he leads through threats and intimidation and fear and um, this is a long-suffering story <laughs> I did want something dark. Anyawu is someone that I love. I adore her. She's just doing her darndest. And and she was living her life just fine before Dagum Doro showed up. Um, this is a long suffering story. So far I'm not entirely sure I know what we're doing here. I've only read one other book by Octavia Butler before this and it was called Kindred and I loved it. And that set me with the expectations that we're doing something here, right? Like it's not just a fascinating story but there's something we're talking about in the narrative itself. There's a conversation that Butler wouldn't mind having with me. And so far I'm not entirely sure what that conversation is but I can say that this much like Kindred is a slow moving plot. It's not in a hurry. It's not trying to have a bunch of explosions and twists to keep you invested. It's a slow moving intrigue 
that is very focused on characters and very focused on emotions and the emotions aren't easy at all and she never pulls punches it actually Octavia E Butler really reminds me a lot of NK Jemison Jemison I think has more beautiful prose but they both have this very stark and um, raw way of telling their story where they're not trying to make you the reader suffer they're just trying to be honest they're just trying to really brutally honestly show pain and suffering. And I feel like the way they both do it is so uniquely told and so painful, but at the same time gripping, like I can't stop reading. I'm not enjoying myself because the story is hard to read and I love Anyawu and I don't want her to suffer. <laughs> and I have a feeling that it's only just begun, but also I can't stop reading her story. Her story must be told and I must hear it. Does that make sense? That's where I am at this point in the story. I finished Wild Seed and I do I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> it was excellent and it was strange and it was hard to read. So Wild Seed, I already told you what it was about. Um man, like I said, Octavia E. Butler does not pull punches. Ever. She pushes her characters so far, but she she just shows just stark pain and she shows it in just a very blunt way. And I love her for that. Uh, but also, my goodness, her books contain so much pain to them. Um, in a very like I feel like I'm there like I've read books I've read darker books than this But this is just such a close look to the character that I feel it in me a little bit more than normal um, Anyway, I've already talked to you about what the book is about. So I'll say this uh, I don't know how I feel about this book. I know I liked Kindred more than this one but one thing that I'm starting to realize about Butler is that the way she writes her main characters, at least the way she wrote these two, is they're so strong and smart and strong-willed, yet they oftentimes are passive in the face of extreme adversity. Um, they're not exclusively passive characters, but they are oftentimes passive. And I actually really love the way she writes them because I think it's a really good display of how you just can't always be the hero. Sometimes it's just easier not to fight. Sometimes it it is too hard to keep being the hero and keep fighting people and, and it's too easy to believe that there is some goodness in people who you know, have humanity in them, but are at their core doing horrible things. And that everything's not completely black and white. Sometimes in order to protect one person, you have to sacrifice something of yourself. And oh man, I don't know. There's just, there's so much to this book. And I loved it, but I didn't at this, I mean, I did. I, I, I find her writing and her story to help. I find her writing and her storytelling just so readable and so gripping. I really have a hard time putting her books down. Um, she's just such a fast and quick yet like to the chest read. Um, 
But also, like, there's weird stuff in her books, particularly this one. I don't remember weird stuff being in Kindred, but, like, yeah, she's a shapeshifter, but somebody explained to me why I needed to know that when she was in dolphin form, she was hungry for some dolphin lovin'. Like, somebody explained to me why that needed to be in the book. <laughs> there's weird stuff in that book, but it's mostly, it's mostly good. <laughs> um, so I'm done with that, and I definitely liked Kindred more, but I... I just find Octavia E. Butler's books to be so readable and so gripping and I just feel like I'm there um, and I really, I really enjoyed it. I have been listening to the audiobook for He Who Fights With Monsters. I have the physical because my friend actually who loves this book sent me the physical because he wanted, because there's a lot of stats in this and he wanted me to be able to physically see the stats, which actually has been great. Uh, so I listened to the audiobook and at the end of a chapter, I am looking at the, at, at the, I'm looking through the chapter, flipping through it to be able to read the stats, which has been really useful actually. So this is about a man who a summoning spell went wrong and he got ripped out of Australia and actually put inside a video game. And it's, it's a really, it's a funny book. Like it's, it's light. It's exactly the kind of tone that I think is necessary for a whoops, you accidentally got put into a video game. You know, like there's jokes around every corner. Uh, Jason, our lead, takes things very lightly and uh, just breezes through things and stumbles his way through things. Um, it's, it's a really funny book and it's unlike anything I've read. I've never read a whoops, I'm in a video game now. I've never read that plot. Uh, I know that those are out there, but I haven't read it, so it's very fresh to me. Um, Jason was a character that at the beginning of this book I thought was so witty and funny. <laughs> and I just don't like him anymore. <laughs> he, at first I thought he was so clever, but the man cannot have a single conversation, cannot utter a single sentence without having a quippy comeback. He is, he, he's so clever, he just can't have a serious conversation. He cannot function beyond banter. And I, <laughs> I'm just like, dude, <laughs> just take something seriously. I beg you, just like one thing would be great. And now that I've seen it, and now that it's like in my face, it's like, I can't stand him. Every line, it's like, that's very clever. Say something else. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm only about a quarter of the way through the audiobook and it's like, it's not short. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do actually is I'm going, and I just got um, the book The Thief in from the library. I got the audiobook for it in from the library. Um, and I really want to read that before it expires and goes back. So I'm going to pause He Who Fights With Monsters and I'm going to start listening to The Thief instead. And that's only like, I think it's only like an eight hour or six hour audiobook. So I should get through that uh, pretty quickly and then I'll hop back on He Who Fights With Monsters. And I'm at least gonna give it to the halfway point before I quit on it because I was really, really enjoying it in the beginning. And I'm just like, I'm such a character reader that if I don't like the main character, then I kind of, it makes it a little bit harder unless they're intentionally unlikable. So we'll see how that goes. Um, also, I need to figure out what my next physical read is. I'm inclined to just start um, Joe Abercrombie's book, but several comments mentioned that it was a Western, and I don't think I'm in the mood for a Western, so I've got to figure out what I'm going to read physically next. But anyway, that was what I read this week, and uh, I will be reading other things next week. So thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some recommendations out of it or just some good discussions would be fine too. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday on my main channel and Thursdays here on my vlog channel. I'll see you again soon. Bye.